Today we remember, we celebrate a special day in the Christian calendar. We call it Palm Sunday. And it is the day we remember Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem one week before his resurrection. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday gives us an opportunity to lift Jesus higher. It is clear the scripture says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me and, and, and the Man needs to be drawn, women needs to be drawn to the Lord in this season, especially of life. And so Palm Sunday gives us an opportunity to lift Jesus higher. But, but to many of us believers, Palm Sunday, or to many Christians, Palm Sunday um, is a reminder that we can know about Jesus. We can, we can recognize Jesus, but not truly know who he is. And so Palm Sunday is a challenge to us to make sure that we know Jesus the Christ. You see, on the first Palm Sunday, the crowds cried, Hosanna. At the beginning of the week but one week later they were crying crucify him so it is my desire that you feel the warmth that you feel welcome to worship with us but also that you truly feel challenged to know jesus in a real and personal way so in today's service we have a special treat maybe two special treats for you um, we will hear from our presiding bishop and later in the service we'll also have a special rendition from our children now let's tune our hearts together as we engage um, in a time of worship. Rejoice greatly, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He's righteous and victorious, yet he's humble, riding on a donkey, even on a donkey's coat. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithfulness endures forever. And I looked, and there was a great crowd that no one could number. They were from every nation, tribe, and people, and language. They were standing before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, Victory, Victory belongs, belongs to our God, God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels fell face down before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. 
Amen. Well, let us hear the Palm Sunday account according to Matthew's Gospel from Sister Carol. This reading is taken from the 21st chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verses 1 to 11. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came, and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to thee, O Lord. Father, we thank you for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ. Today we remember his entry into Jerusalem where he was proclaimed Messiah and the King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. But let the palm branches that we reflect on today be for us signs of victory and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of our lives. Father, make us obedient and give us the mind of Christ so that like Christ, we too will bring glory to your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn for our service today is the Palm Sunday hymn, and uh, it's a much older hymn, but we will sing a few verses of it. It's called All Glory, Lord, and On. Thank you. 
Seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every tribe and every tongue before him prostrate fall and shout in universal song the crown and Lord of all and shout in universal song the crown and Lord of all Oh that with yonder sacred throne we at his feet may fall join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all join in the everlasting song and crown
Lord, and He's worthy of all honor. He's the only Son who died for our sins. He's so worthy. Give Him praise. He's worthy. Worthy. I really hope that you engaged with us um, in our time of worship. Um, I, I do know that um, these are tough times, but even in tough times, God is still good, and God is still fully in control. Again, it goes without saying, but I'm going to remind you, especially those who are accustomed to gathering with us on Sundays or different days for our services on North River Road, that um, I, I miss you. Um, I miss being with you and worshiping the Lord together, and, uh, but God's willing, we'll connect again soon, but I'm so happy that we have this medium uh, to connect. I want to express my gratitude um, for those who have been um, stopping by and, and um, dropping off offerings. Um, it's very important that you know that we really do appreciate that. Um, those who have been getting online and doing email transfers, um, but I do want to remind you that, that we, do, we do need you to do that, um, to continue to support the church financially. Um, if you are accustomed to being in church on Sundays and give an offering and you haven't um, done that, then, then there is still a void. And so please help us in filling that. Um, imagine we are at the beginning of Holy Week, which is the very last week of our season of fasting, uh, 33 days of fasting. And so this is the last week. Um, I encourage you to join us Monday to Friday for a season of fasting. And um, in, the, in the hours to come, I'll be sending out the prayer guide uh, for this week. And we are hoping, uh, we are planning on having an online presentation for Good Friday as well. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get all that done so we'll be able to have an online Good Friday service. Um, so we'll send that out to you, uh, letting you know what time. Um, but I encourage you to uh, walk with the Lord in a special way on this Holy Week. Um, uh, I, I want to um, encourage us to continue to pray for each other and wherever we can, however we can, reach out to each other and support each other and um, let the uh, Shilohite light of Christ that is in us um, shine brightly, uh, um, especially to our neighbors so people can see God and hear God through us in this season. Um, today's message will be given to us by our presiding bishop and um, immediately after, shortly after the video, after bishop's uh, message, we'll have a video from uh, some of our children here at Shiloh. So let's receive our presiding bishop as he brings uh, today's message. Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you here in the Shiloh Holiness Church this morning. Good to see you here to worship God and to praise God. And we welcome those who are viewing in from across the country or around the world. I'm the presiding bishop of the Independent Holiness Churches, and it's a joy to be here with you. So let's begin to worship God and minister. It is truly an honor to be with you folk this morning. Truly an honor to celebrate this day when we're celebrating the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into the city of Jerusalem. But before we begin that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, for the great plan of salvation that you've put in place for us, for Christ who came to show us the way, who took our place on that cruel cross and who rose again that we might have a living hope for all time. Father, bless your people. Watch over each one as we go through the crises of life. Teach us to reach out in faith and receive all that you've provided through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
In his name we pray. Amen. This morning, let me share with you a few verses of Scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3 and verse 11. I'm reading from the King James Version, which the one I grew up with, and it's kind of hard for me to change at this time in life. I'm not telling you how old I am or how young I am, but in this time of life, change becomes more difficult. Let's read. Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which was dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. In verse 11, the people took branches of the palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel. This morning as we open the word, I want us to look at the gospel of the apostle John as he emphasizes the ministry of Jesus Christ during this final week. I want to walk through the path that Jesus walked. I want to see what he shared with his disciples and also what he's sharing with you and I because as much as he shared it with them, the story is eternal and he's sharing it with us. We will start in John chapter 12 where John says it was six days before the final Passover Jesus and his disciples were in Bethany, just outside the city of Jerusalem, in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Lazarus. Lazarus, the one who had been raised from the dead just a few weeks earlier, now sits in perfect health at the table with them. Remember? He'd been dead for four days, and such a miracle had brought great attention, attention that religious leaders did not want. And now they not only wanted to get rid of Jesus, but they also wanted to get rid of Lazarus. After the supper meal, Mary does something astounding. She takes a very costly ointment of spikenard, anoints Jesus' feet, and shamelessly loosens her long hair and begins to wipe his feet in front of the shocked disciples. To this display, Jesus responds and introduces a subject I don't believe the disciples were thinking about. He says, let her alone. She is doing this for my burial. He has embarked on his final week, the final test which the end will come just after the next Sabbath, when he, the risen Christ, stands upon the eternal podium and receives the gold medal from his father. His life work is finished. The price for sin has been fully paid. But we don't want to go there yet, do we? During these times, he breaks new ground as he ministers to his disciples of the Passover meal. He takes the role of a servant, washing their feet and telling them, do as I have done to you. Serve one another. Then as we look at John chapter 14, we see some other words that he shares that so often are used. In fact, I use them at almost every funeral service where folks are gathering for their departed loved ones. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He says again, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. As we move on into the next chapter, we read, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. If you abide in me, 
and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Then we wouldn't want to forget that beautiful prayer in John chapter 17, which some have called the true Lord's Prayer. That's the prayer where Jesus is praying to his Father for you and I, for all mankind of all times and all ages. The passage we know as the Lord's Prayer is the one he taught us to pray and is sometimes called the Believer's Prayer. John was the youngest of the disciples, and he must have kept these words in his heart because no one else records them. Out of John chapter 17, I have picked just a few words to share with you, a few thoughts that I believe, for John at least, were extra special. Father, I pray that you would keep them from the evil. Sanctify them through thy truth. We need to remember that sanctify means not only to set apart, but it means to cleanse and make pure. John records, I have given them the glory you have given me. And that, Father, I want them to behold, I want them to behold your glory. I can hardly imagine it. But I, I like to drop back and, and sort of get the idea of how John must have felt. This young man, as he heard Jesus praying these words, I just believe that it had a special effect on him. For years later, years down the road when he's an older man and he writes the gospel, he writes these words and they appear as fresh as ever. Yes, in fact, when I read these words today, they jump off of the page and come into my heart and mean something special to me. These words are there. I pray not for these alone. This is special to me because I pray not for these alone, but for all those who will believe on me because of their word, my friend. That is for you, and that is for me today, just as it was back then. Jesus was betrayed. He was crucified. He rose again, and he's alive forevermore, the Son of God. But wait a moment. We were talking about Palm Sunday, weren't we, and the visit to Jerusalem. After Jesus' visit in Bethany, he and his disciples headed for the city of Jerusalem, and a great crowd of people came from the city and gathered. They took palm branches, the Bible says. They hailed him as king. Hosanna to the king. Hosanna to the son of David. To them, it was certain victory. It was his time had come. They would make him king. But I'm so amazed. It's only a few days later that this same crowd called out, crucify him, crucify him. What made the change? I believe it's because Jesus called for repentance. He said it was a time to change their ways. It was a time to follow his teachings and follow his example to truly and fully believe they were not ready. Even like many today who hear the message and they're not ready to fully believe. They're not ready to let that belief take hold of their lives and change them. Remember what John said when he wrote the gospel, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12? There, John says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. My friends, both friends here in this service today, friends across the nation, wherever you are listening, my friends, 
this morning, will you choose to believe fully in Jesus Christ? See all that he has done for you, all that he wants to do. I don't want you to miss the fullness of all that Christ has for you. And so I ask you, if you do not know Jesus Christ, that you choose to receive him today as your Savior and as the Lord of your life. This morning, if you will make that choice, I encourage you to pray with me as we pray. Father in heaven, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he came to this world to save me from my sin. I believe that Jesus came to Jerusalem that day to take my place. I confess that I have sinned and need a Savior. I want Jesus the Christ to be my Savior and my Lord. I choose today to walk in obedience. Father, may your Spirit teach me, guide me, comfort me, and empower me to do your will. Amen. And I know for you out there watching this today, and for you, wherever you are, we're going through difficult times. There, are, there is illness across our world. There are jobs that have been lost. There, there are pressures coming upon every person. And this morning, let us pray. Let me pray that God will just watch over you during these trying times. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you are the God of all comfort. You're the God of all care. You're the God that knows all things even before they happen. And Father, you can prepare us. And so, Father, for those who are going through very trying times that this illness is reaching their communities, it's reaching their homes, it's reaching their country. Father, I pray that you would draw near to every soul. Lord, that you would bring their, your peace to them in the midst of this problem. Father, that you would watch over and care, that you would heal, that you would empower, that you would bless, that you would give victory in the midst of this storm. For, Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. May God bless you. I trust that you um, were blessed by our bishop's message, and um, uh, we are happy to have him as our overseer, um, and we are grateful for both him and uh, Lady Votary um, as they watch over the independent holiness churches, of course, the denomination of which we are a part of. So we are going to have a special video by our children so it is really cute, really special, so enjoy that. It's a little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, 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 let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I know without a doubt you enjoyed watching our children, and we've already served the parents' notice that those videos are certainly ending up on YouTube 
or our Facebook page. So you'll get to see, as you can see, it's a compilation we've sort of put together. But you'll get to see all of the, the videos that the parents sent us. And we'll do more of this to sort of engage our children and, and um, uh, keep them sort of connected in community as well. Well, we are going to close out our service for this week. Again, I want to thank you for um, being a part, for, 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 for signing in, for tuning in, for joining us, um, for attending Shiloh Holiness Church online. Um, I want to remind you that we do care about you, uh, Nat and I, the leadership here at the church. You do matter to us, um, and we've been trying to find ways to connect. And, and if you have a need of any sort, feel free to call um, even if it's just for prayer or just someone to talk to, feel free to reach out, and we'll definitely do all we can to help and to support. I remind you that we begin a very important week in the life of the church. It's Holy Week, so please make an extra effort to walk with the Lord this week. The situation is different. The dynamics are different this year, but it's still the same Lord, um, and it is the same opportunity that we have to go deeper with the Lord um, this Holy Week, this Easter season. So. We'll connect again another time. Uh, we're planning on, on Good Friday. Um, but until then, would you bow your heads for the benediction? Beloved, I declare over you wholeness, protection, prosperity, provision, and peace. And that peace from God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And every blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and with you, both now and forever. If you receive it, say amen. amen. We'll close with our doxology. Praise God.